so I think it's, it's absolutely fine. I have a habit of over-engineering things and I just don't think there's any need to over-engineer this. Now I start my beekeeping course next week and I'm dead excited about it. Really looking forward to learning how to keep bees. My friend did it last year and she really enjoyed it. She's the one that recommended it to me. She has bought some hives. So she's got a national hive like this. And she asked me if I could knock up a stand for it. And look in, she wants a stand about a foot high, 30 centimetres high, and with a flight board on it. So I thought I'd knock one up, got some two by two treated timber here, which will do fine. Be nice to use cedar, but I haven't got that. So we're going to use some of this, make ourselves a frame, sit it on, dead simple. So first of all, we're going to make ourselves a kind of a ring all the way round. Uh, with two pointy bits on for a flight board. They're all standard sizes, so I can make this up. But I'm going to use halving joints to halve the ring together. Then we're not some legs over, and that should look good. Right. So we'll mark this up for a simple halving joint. So that is literally, we're just going to have on these two, the two shorter ones. So it's just the width of the timber and then halfway down. And then this one is going to have, it's going to be marked up like so. So we're going to have halving joint on the back. And with the halving joint set in, let's get a square, set in the right distance, the 46 or whatever it is. From there. And then that can slope off then. We'll have a nice big slope and that can be for our flight boards. So, we want the depth set for that. So, half of 44, 22. Now, there's two ways we can go with this. We can go with the band saw or we can just use the miter saw, make lots of choppings and then knock it out afterwards, which I think is what we'll do. It's fairly easy to do. It does mean we've got to put up a little false fence. because of the curve of the blade. We have that there, that there. I'll tell you what, mark up the end of that one. Got no time for messing about today. I've got other stuff to make and I am procrastinating by doing this because I have something with a deadline and I've decided to do this first <laughs> because I am my own worst enemy. Better under pressure anyway. Turn it on the other. Hold them together. You're really perfect today. Eh? Look at that. I could have done it before. Right. Lots of little cuts, knock them off. They were tidy over the blade. We could use a chisel, we're being quick today. There we go, we've got one half joint cut. Might need to tidy it over the chisel, might not. Check the other one to go in it, bit tight, take a bit more off. Right, it's gone together quite nicely. Fits all right. And like I said, just halving joint it together. Now I need to cut the slope on that. I have got some shiplap. Uh, Tunnelized shiplap, we'll just put it on top. So I think we'll just cut that as a slope from 10 mil up to there. Cut it on the bandsaw. And we're going to cut it so it goes a little bit off so that it's kind of flat with the top there. Look 
doesn't hurt to have a bit of glue in there as well. It's not a piece of furniture, so we don't need to worry too much. Slap it in there. I put one screw in each corner, then square it up. make some legs. I kind of like the idea of having them splayed. I don't think having them splayed four ways is going to be very handy for cutting. Use this bit of 4 but 2 Right, I've got four legs cut, but actually what I'm going to do, on a 15 degree angle, I'm going to notch them into the side so they take the weight a little bit. And then I'll probably notch them forward as well. Ooh, that's a lot of work. But that's probably the best way to do it. So, we mark up how much. Right, it's just going to be a piece of, piece of the two for two, isn't it? Going to have handed ones as well. So, going to have two to one side, two to the other. Same with the back. So, let's do that with some halving joints on the bite saw. Okay, these are looking pretty nice. They're gonna go on like that, but I feel like we might as well notch them again so that they're kind of sat onto these bits. So we can go back. Basically, take that out. Glow. Slightly longer screws this time, Got plenty of space for it to go into. Obviously you could pilot these before you do it, the screws going in fine, it's never creating work if you don't have to. looks pretty good doesn't it? I know it's just a stand uh, but you know as I get a bit more learning a bit more about beekeeping the more excited I get. I quite like this nice little flight board all tannized timber what I will do is treat the bottoms of this to stop the rot going up up inside it I've got some old tannalizing stuff I can use for that but yeah no that looks pretty cool doesn't it? Do you like it? Tell me you do. Right, so let's get, might as well put the hive together. <laughs> now, part of me wanted to do these as a compound mitre, so I haven't splayed that way and this way, but for what you can buy them for, and a lot of them seem quite straight, so I just didn't think it was worth it. I think that is going to be plenty sturdy enough. The fact that it's notched, it's good, it's not going to fall over. Um, so I think it's, it's absolutely fine. I have a habit of over-engineering things, and I just don't think there's any need to over-engineer this. So there you go. Hive stand set up with a flight board. <laughs> Dead simple to make. A little bit of joinery with the, uh, the bevels and some halving joints but absolutely solid as a rock. Once that bottom is treated now, it should last for a long, long time. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and see you next time. <laughs>